So, thank you, Councilwoman, for giving me the opportunity to come to your program this morning just to give folks an idea of what we're doing in the school district. I will say that I have a great staff from the executive directors to the assistant superintendent to the business administrator, the ABA, the staff, right? The support staff. This is the IT, right? So, everybody is working on so the great work for children. And as we saw on September 1st, we got the Mr. here. The spirit was so alive in Orange County Square County Auditorium and at our lunch box, right? We just want to make sure that everybody can be encapsulated in a space where they can bring back, can bring back the school district and one life, right? So, with that being said, thank you. Councilwoman, thank you to the Board of Education. And thank you all for getting this morning. I just want to jump in and just um, chat a little bit about where we are and where we're going. When I became superintendent in July of 2019, we had about 5,600 students. Currently, we have just under 5,900 students. What does that say? People starting to believe in what we're doing, right? And also, the pandemic was a piece where folks had to bring folks to their homes and say, you know what, we need a school that's going to care. We have teachers, we have support staff, we have staff professionals, security, who go in their pockets. Make sure it's accurate, right? We have folks that are working around the clock to give instruction to students when they're home with their families, right? And we know that. And we have to always say thank you to them, right? Because it's not just a not the two thing, it's a folk guy of everybody. The families are another important piece. And so in our strategic plan, I always bring it with me so that folks see what we get to bring this. There's four core areas, and the first core area is the old school connection. And what do we have here this morning? We have families here. And families are the eight, at the apex of making sure the children are getting what they need. And so I'm so excited about the strategic plan and how we're going to move the district into the next generation. It's a five-year plan. It ends in 2026, right? And in 2026, in record before 2026, we're going to have another stakeholder roundtable series where we have folks come back to the table and discuss with us what we've done well, what we need to improve upon. I don't see things as complaining, I see it as solution oriented. So I think it's important for folks to understand that when they email reopening the schools, right, they give us a suggestion, it doesn't just go into file 13 and say, we're not going to listen. Actually, bring them out and you're an executive team, we discuss it, principal meetings, assistant principal meetings, we discuss it. So we have an opportunity to kind of hear the folks of what folks are saying about opening or about school supplies or about homework so that we know we're doing what's the best in the best interest of children. All right? So I always want to preface by saying don't get upset when the teacher calls. Listen. We do the blasts. I want you to not hang up. I want you to listen. Because once you listen, you have a better um, full guide of what's happening in the school district. We created the Orange app for a reason, right? The Orange app provides an opportunity for families to have on-the-spot information on the website. So if you haven't had an opportunity to subscribe to the Orange app, please do it. Because the Orange app is so good, right? It's why I keep it on my phone. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Yep. I, is there a way that people in the public can have, have access to the Orange app? Children, mm -hmm. they also, so we can keep up with download the Apple, the Apple Store, okay. and it's um, um, Samsung. You can do it on Samsung, and we also have a link on the website where you're able just to subscribe on the website. The website also is translatable in Spanish and Haitian Creole. So anything that we put out, we make sure that we have things in multiple languages. We have translators at the ready, even on opening day, throughout the course of the year, to make sure that folks have information in their language. All of our programs, again, dual languages, so that we make sure that folks are able to engage in the practices, right? And so the Orange app is critical. Our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram, everybody knows we are out in the street all the time in the schools to make sure that folks know what is happening. And folks do send messages and say, well, I'm having an issue with this. Can you fix this? Or I want to see more of this school versus that school. And so we have to take a look at and make sure that we're equitable in the work that we're doing throughout the district. 
And so the board has been very vigilant in terms of ensuring that all the schools are represented in a correct fashion, and we're going to continue to do that critical work, right? And so I want to thank the board for always putting me to, to task to make sure we're doing that great work. Just to, in, in an important piece to speak about that, the uh, facilities committee in, on July 27th took a walkthrough of the new Orange High School. The board is very important to the work that's being done. We don't just talk about it in committee. They actually go to schools to make sure it's being implemented, right? So one, one of the most important pieces is if they don't see it, they're going to ask why, right? We just did a um, contract with Charbos. What did we do the other day, Mr. Armstrong? We were food tasting. <laughs> and also, we were engaging the students mm -hmm. at each school, asking them what did they think of the food that they were receiving now. Yeah. The kids at the taste test, they felt that the food wasn't good enough. And we invited families to come in. We invited staff to come in. We invited administration. You know, everybody was at the table, board members, to give us a sense of what they felt about the food. And board president Johnson said, okay, it's nice that we did this for the, for the lunch. What about the breakfast? Right? And so then we had the breakfast tasting at Rosa Parks. And there was some, Ms. Singleton is going to bring you for a minute. There was a discussion about the warm food being the same container as the, the, um, the milk or the juice. So we had a conversation about that. And so that was things that we probably didn't even think about because we're not in there every single day. So that's why we have to have folks come to the table for actually walking the things upstairs or sitting with the kids to see it, right? So Mr. Armstrong and I, we went to have lunch at STEM, we had lunch at um, Lincoln, and we had lunch at um, Arts Preparatory Academy and Great Innovation. And we did it as such an unannounced so that folks didn't know we were coming and that we could have a conversation with the staff, the truck wells, and the kids about what they felt and how the food was too bad. I'm ready. It's all from. I guess you could say then, um, like Chris, you like you're not a superintendent that sits behind the desk. Mm -hmm. I like to be in schools, and I think it's important that when you're in schools, that you're seeing what's going on, and that you have a conversation with the staff, the kiddos, you know, even from the parents that are coming in, they're saying, oh, they say at Lincoln, they have the pep rally, and I'm coming out, of the, going into the pep rally. I just need you for two minutes. I said, the kids, they need me first. I got to to see the kids. But I said, Evo, we open the schools. We'll set up an appointment next week. We'll have a conversation about what your needs are. Right? So I think it's important that folks know they can touch the superintendent, they can have a conversation, and that the superintendent will be visible. And it's not just me. My executive team members are present. My assistant superintendent is visible. So there's no I in team, right? Just this morning, I was driving down with Clarendon. Who's outside? Principal Governor. Why? Because he is doing SAT prep at the school. The kids are over at the uh, mock trial. Who's with the kids? Dr. Debbie, Principal Sten. I didn't ask them to come and do those things. They do because they're part of the fabric of the school district, right? You ask the staff to come, they come Johnny on the spot. They don't ask for anything, but what can we do to help the kids? So this is the district that we have. This is what I inherited, right? And so I am so appreciative of the staff that we have. They don't complain, all they do is ask questions. They want to hear what they can do to help the district, and they want to hear their concerns being met. And I appreciate that holistically from the staff in our district to the parents. Even though I talk about the, the strategic plan and the importance of it, we have two parts of the strategic plan. This is the, the fabric. But what makes this successful, the district goals. And we have four areas of the district goals which are encompassing of the work that we're doing to make this successful. So I, I implore folks to read over the strategic plan and my weekly update. The links are in, embedded in my weekly update. It was a woman from Crockett who had said to me, there's so many things that are happening. You gotta capture it every single week. And so instead of just doing simple emails or little blasts, that was how my strategic update was created. So I just would like to thank Morgan Proctor for giving me that suggestion to make sure that the community has an even more bigger post. Instead of seeing social media, instead of seeing the website, they need to see a letter every week, right? And so the board gets updates, the, the staff gets updates, so the families get updates, so everybody has a clear understanding of what's happening in the school district. 
Is it a lot of work? It is. But guess what? We have to report it out because transparency is important. Now, is everything perfect? I will be the first one to say no. Are there things that we can improve upon? Absolutely. And that's why I always implore folks to come to the board meetings. The board has said it. Jesus said it. <laughs> All the time, right? And we're not going to always get it's everything's great. But we're also going to get the suggestions that we need to hear so that we can think it better. So now I'm going to go into the drop of the big results. Because that was something that was brought up from the community, right? right. Um, that was something that was brought up from staff. And now the city is in the process of painting the pick up and drop off zones. Actually, they're all done. Yeah. I do want to yep. add to that. Recently, I, I met with the administration, mm -hmm. um, met with the mayor, and then the SS4 grant, which is mm -hmm. you know, the street city mm -hmm. um, in the city. And so we're going out for that grant. That grant application was due September 15th. Mm -hmm. We have our uh, director of public works in the group. Uh, deal with the streets mm -hmm. and, and the infrastructure in the city. So, preferably, hopefully, we get that grant, mm -hmm. which will also assist. assist in, uh, it's been cleaner yeah. now that there's identified pick up and drop off some It's on the media. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, the drop off right now, we can get all the parts. Mm -hmm. uh, the roads are done in mm -hmm. Lincoln Avenue. Forest is done. Cable is done. Uh, some signs will be going up. Mm -hmm. So we just ask that anybody be mindful of the drop off zones. We're trying to make it convenient for the parents and make the kids safe as they go into the school. So it totally won't be completed probably until the high school and the middle school will be last. Mm -hmm. So I um, just to get the small kids first. Will residents be able to park after? That's a good hours. question. After the hours? That's yeah, a after the school hours, will the residents be able to park? Yes. It, it, it would be if the time or the sign is off, the time is about to identify the hours that we drop off on the distance. Some residents might be very involved in there because the curve is off towards the dark yellow. yellow. Right. But more information will be going out to the superintendent as we proceed okay. forward, and police will be identifying those areas. And I do want to say, I was in DC a couple weeks ago, and I, I assumed they have a state street of the grant because they completely redone everything. Like all of the speed limits are down to 15 miles an hour with a general group, a residential neighborhood. But they also, to speak to that, I'm getting really feel, they also have different colors of the curve. Like the pedestrian walkways are quite different than the curving. So it might be just as simple as us like painting something orange after the curve thing. They did it in DC. That's just a suggestion. Right, so uh, I'm going to have that conversation with police. Uh, I don't know if that's how it's being done by ordinance. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things that are done by ordinance would be enforced. So I'll have that conversation with them. Also, in front of the school areas, there's going to be a speed limit sign coming up. The class is trying to come in. What's your speed limit? Uh, police has to run in charge of one at every school. Um, they probably become a mass that was a little bit more expensive, okay. but there were some signs of that nature going on as well. What is this people? Uh, the school number is 25. So, um, I. Let me double check. It is. That was my. I'm going to um, introduce legislation where, after I talk to people before, to make me bring it down to 15. Now, now, like I would have they speed through. Yeah, they, they do. They, they speed through. So if we, if we, it's 25 now, and people are getting 50, so maybe if we do. And we can take a look 15, at it. Now, maybe they don't have to be around the school. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that as well. So what about the speed things and the? There's most of that. We are going to take a look at putting speed bumps around the school. That won't be coming this year because we have to plan for that. We put it into our budget. And I have to speak to my boss and emergency services because we have to allow for emergency services to get to certain areas in a timely manner. If everybody's okay with it, I'll be okay with it. For example, I think um, Mr. Wingfield is speaking about on that Center Street where every so often there's a speed bump, right? So we couldn't do that on Oakwood where the senior buildings are because we have three senior buildings there. So just think every so often. But they're not as close as the ones are on Center Street. They're not, they're not, yeah, and they're not as high. Okay. They're not as high. 
So the information out from I guess the why is why we are so good? Open as the door. They heard it or stri uh, striped, but it's not enough space to put boxes in. So in that area, the turbine will only be striped, but there will be no boxes. Mm -hmm. Because it's a two way lane, broad coming up, and it's not, the street is too narrow to put boxes. When you say boxes, can you explain that to us if you don't know? It's drop off boxes where the cars pull into. So the cars are pulling into the drop off box. Let the kids out, and I believe Dr. 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 Fisher would have uh, somebody from his staff at the curves mm -hmm. uh, taking the kids and ushering them into the school. Mm -hmm. That way we can keep the parents yeah. moving, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you notice know, parents get out, walk the kids into the building, mm -hmm. that would defeat the purpose mm -hmm. because you're going to be mm -hmm. attracted there. So his staff would be out there and seeing the children, yep. and the parents would just keep on going. And that's why we have identified staff that are outside to receive the students, right? So we can avoid some of the traffic. There's certain parts of town that are very congested. Oakwood Avenue being one, Forest being another. Um, so I'm just going to use those two as an example. In the morning, if I go to Forest at about 8, I would say 8, 15, 8, 20, it is bumper to bumper, right? And so that's why I was picked up and drunk on some of the Because folks stay double part. Right, and it's not that they are trying to be disrespectful, right? Because as a parent, I want to make sure the kid, my two kids, get in school safely, right. right? I was guilty of it yesterday when I took them to school, right? I put my flashes on and I was like, okay, man. <laughs> right? So we have to be constantly loving this being able to trust the staff to receive the students so that they know that they have to keep going so that we can receive more kids that are coming into the cars in the morning. All right? So, um, my staff has been going around to the pick up the drop off zones since the beginning of the school year. I try to go to one school every morning to see it for myself and then have conversations with the building leaders about the you know, pick up and drop off zones. We do send letters home about how to receive students in the morning. So, folks, just please, I always ask folks just to read up on it, read our parent letters, because every single principal does that, right? We're going to continue the coffee or tea chat issues with the principals. We've been doing this since the pandemic. We found it to be very successful. So we're going back to that as well. All right, so we'll continue that for this school year. And if I may, yeah. uh, we're not perfect. So any input, uh, mm -hmm. information, or suggestions that cool. you guys want yeah. to give, I'm open to it. We will take a look at it. I'll review it with police, because again, police enforces it. So any suggestions that you may have, feel free to contact me. And I'm going to give you my personal number, 862. 250140, Traffic police, he's a traffic police officer. I believe it's going to be clarity. Oh, okay, because they moved the entrance. So, students have, they go in and come around the house. So, I thought I was thinking about that. Um, you know, that specific area is really congested for all the apartments over there. So, we're trying to be considered to the residents as well as the parents. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak to the academic and vocational track of your of middle and high school? Because that's a great question. So we do have CTE courses from entrepreneurship to accounting to culinary arts. And so I think it's important to understand that all the curriculum of what that now is going to be banned. The um, HIQ Second Evaluation in 2020 indicated we had a perfect score in curriculum writing and many of just don't get that. <clears throat> but we did a big revamp of essential questions, which would be overarching questions that students should be able to answer at the end of a unit. It's not an everyday question that they would be able to ascertain, right? It's throughout the significant learning. We also updated the enduring learning understandings, assessments, differentiation of instruction, 21st century integration. And 21st century integration looks at um, skills and development where students would be able to um, identify and work aside their fears in different areas, right? So one thing that I've learned about 
ensuring that students have one-to-one integration with technology is that they'll be able to engage with um, being able to research different entities or they'll be able to um, pen pal with students in different countries and that's what we're trying to implement in the school district right because students we want students to actually be able to engage outside the city walls so one thing that we are bringing this year so this is a surprise is the Rutgers um, model congress so it's a part an informative part of debates right and it's something that i did when i was a superintendent in Hoboken, and i felt that we needed that here in orange township public school district and so we are implementing that practice um, this school year so a big thank you to um mr Melton, who i gave the charge to and, and he worked with miss um harris our executive director of the office of humanities and myself to kind of implement that practice so we are launching that this school year at the high school level. All right. Yeah, critical thinking is, is, is important. And the question and special techniques that we are employing into our students, most critical, right? So on the lesson plan format for the instructional staff, it's something called pre-planned questions that are differentiated for students um, who are introductory to learning all the way up to the higher tiers of academic, academia. And so we're making sure that students are engaging with known taxonomy, whether it be of the um, creating tier or to the analysis tier. So we want to make sure that folks are understanding those questions that they need to find out. Ms. Armstrong? Just real quick, Dr. Chris, you back into the pandemic, I know it's a hard for so from the retreat for the administration, we had a wellness component of the retreat where we had yoga, um, reading exercises, etc. Right? So we wanted folks to be able to go back to the planning for the opening of school in a more calm space. Right? And we learned that we don't know what actually goes on in homes, so we want to make sure that we also implement that practice at the school level. So as an example, um, at Cleveland Elementary School, in the principal's weekly he had written last week that we have to remember that the first five minutes of the day, we want to impart on the wellness of our students and our staff. So it's like, how we had dropped the people read years ago? That's, in, in essence, what we're doing with the wellness component. One time a month for our faculty meetings, we're actually doing the wellness component, right? And so it's not nothing but trying to work with the wellness component for our staff. And we learned that was important throughout the course of the pandemic. So those lessons learned were important because we didn't want to forget it. The, um, at the district level, I have a trauma informed team that um, provides me with oversight about what they see when I'm not around, right? Which means the, uh, the mental health of folks, right? And so one day I wrote an agenda and I had an old strategic plan goals to it. And one of the members of the team said, it can't be, we're scrap that agenda. And the team bought their agenda. And they said, this is what we need to work on in terms of wellness. And because I'm not a clinician, I didn't, I'm not gonna pretend like I knew everything about wellness. That's why you have a team to educate you how to do that work, right? And so from the four folks that are on that team, we're now planning at the of the course of the year. Our meetings on Wednesday at 2 p.m. We have it uh, monthly. So we, what we do is we look at what we've implemented through uh, our wellness activities at the school level, what works, what does not work, et cetera. And the other piece that we're going to do is do the survey so that folks at, at the uh, school levels can let us know if it is working. And I need to be really honest, it's not going to hurt my feelings. <clears throat> Because what ends up happening is when you internalize things, then you can't move forward. You can only move forward if you are able to reflect on practice, right? And so one thing that we do at the um, academic level is something called collaborative analysis protocol. We look at student work, right? And so we have to reflect on that practice. Same thing like what I just stated about wellness. You have to always reflect on your practice, right? And so what I want everyone to do is they have a suggestion, let us know. Right? And if we're doing it, that means that we have not talked about it enough. Right? And so I may say to someone, well, look at the website, or look at the, the social media handles, or come to back to school night, or to grandparents' day on the 17th at Fox, right? But if you can't make it, then how do you know what's happening? Right? 
everything lives here because I get all the flyers, right? I get all the calories, right? We're pushing everything out so that folks can attend all this important information in those sessions at the school levels or at the district level, right? Do we know that the second Wednesday of the month is our gallery walk for all of our artists? No. Okay. No. So this, in October, the second Tuesday, second Wednesday, I'm sorry, in October, and every month subsequent, the every school, every one school a month does a. Who's that? Oh, I don't know who's that. I was a Right. So they do a um, like an artist in the residence. And so all of the students, they put their, their selected pieces, the art specialists in the building, they present to the community. Right? Mm -hmm. so, and we do push that out as okay. well. Okay, so I'm going to say, can we, can, can we make sure those flyers go to the mayor's office so mm -hmm. the mayor's administration mm -hmm. could put that out? And I would mm -hmm. love, this one would love to the one mm -hmm. this one Facebook page. Okay, but can he send it out to like um, his group of people and also, and also put it out to the senior building? Because mm -hmm. I think the seniors would love to mm -hmm. come and see that as well. It's a carousel. Even if you do have the flyers, we have the community building. <laughs> 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 so these are also things that are on the app too, yes? On the app. Which is but, what you were asking about. Right, but you have access. Mm -hmm. People, like, I don't know, seniors, they don't have the app. They, they need that they have time. So, I think it's since we have public works here, maybe we'll get people out and play it. If we have the flyers printed, they can drop. Will somebody provide transportation for the team? And that may be something where we can tie in to have mm -hmm. transportation where we can pick them up and transport the team. I think they'll love it. Yeah. And also, we'll be running the meeting if you guys give me some of the flyers. Mm -hmm. I can also put them out. That, you know, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And even with the food bank, Ms. Martin, she's behind her camera, but Ms. Martin, um, she texts me in the morning, she says, we're having a food bank, get it, get it out, get it out, get it out. So I text Ms. Perkins or Ms. Devon, whoever, is first to get it out on our website pages, and we push it out. Because again, that's working together, right? So one of the most important things is that when we hear something, and it's something that is going to benefit holistically the community, we try to push it out on our campus as well. And so, say thank you. I mean, even yesterday, she texted me, she said, don't forget, 9.30 a.m., babe, you know. And so we already have a template ready for it before you can push it out. I'm sorry, interrupt. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask a question, though. Uh, I want to know some multiple other people with the idea of having the flyers go out to the board. I don't that's not my idea, and so the board is here. Not my idea. <laughs> Because every month I'm making people to come. And they don't come. And then I have to tell them, you know, you can't complain if you're not doing anything. It's like voting. If you don't go home, don't complain about who's at all. Exactly. You were one of the reasons why we looked at that and we put it in your standing. But standing board up. Instead of asking the people to come to us, we come to you going to the people. Yes, because um, when my child was at OPK, we tried to have PTO meetings the same night as the board meeting. So we are like, okay, our PTO meeting is over. Let's smile into this room now. So I, I just think that's a great idea. I just wish, I wish that as council, we were back live again seeing people. And I think it would be absolutely fantastic for us to go visit each board as a council meeting. Because I think we'll get more people in that meeting if you say, hey, I'm going to be East Board, I'm going to be here, you know, mm -hmm. West or whatever. So I think that's a fantastic idea. Well, I'm so behind the time. I got people up. Two traffic lights are on uh, board meetings. How's that working? How's that happening? Do you want me? Okay, so. The, the Board of Education, they made a determinate that, um, again, they wanted to, they wanted to come to the right? They, right? So what we had to do before we put it out was that we had to go and test our technology in all of those sites. So of course, we need a large enough space. So at Lincoln, the gymnasium. Rosa Parks, the gymnasium, right? Central, the auditorium, 
right? And so we did testing in all the sites under the leadership of Mr. Jason Cordes, our IT manager. It worked beautifully. Then I gave the board the, the, the locations and the times and dates, right? They took it and then they cleaned it up. This is not like it's theirs, right? And so I first put one, one space and then Mr. Beagle said, no, the, the sound is not going to be right. You've got to change it to the cafeteria, right? And so once they went through all of the sites, we were able to push that out. So that was in my August 15th letter of the changes of what we're going to do. It's also going to be a next week's superintendent's update letter, right? Because it will be at Orange Victoria Academy this coming Tuesday, but next month it's going to be where? At Lincoln Elementary. Okay? So they're going to do the traveling thing because we hope that this is going to be a way that we can engage with more families. Ms. Johnson? Schedule them, your schedule, or allow me all still in the same page. So it would be really great for us to attend your meeting, and then you guys to attend our meeting. So that there's no wishwashy, we hear from us, we hear from you, we hear from the people on social media complaining, and it would be better for us to be able to sit in your meetings and bring voice out in the city. And you guys can tell us how mom is to voice your opinions with us as well. Or what we can do to come together and collaborate and work together because that's what's important. That's what we need to get this orange as this county to do for the city and the school district to work together because every other district does it except our district. So it's very important that we get together and work together. You know, brainstorm. I and mean, bring different programs to you. You bring different programs to us. That's what the goal is so that our children can see that we all are working together, and then we never know what will happen. So I, I've suggested that to some of my colleagues. I won't get them. One person. One person. Which I have to vote. And I don't know that I'm not feeling well, maybe we can have a meeting and you guys can get out meeting. Because we met before yeah, yeah. with the orange with the like, mm -hmm. I have a really good relationship with all of the board members that from time to time we meet and we call each other and say, hey, we mm -hmm. can't do this or hey, we can't do that. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I've also suggested that we have a liaison from the council to the board. And so we have them from the library, we have them from the council authority. We don't have a liaison that I know of for the board, which is important because, like you said, we already we have 6,000 kids. And if you do 6,000 times two, that's a possibility of you know, 12,000 people, good family, and then you're adding grandmas and granddads, and you have a lot of people that we could possibly be making a, a positive impact. I will make that suggestion again. What, what I'll do is go to the block we have the same day now with this month. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we gotta, we have to make this happen. We do. We can't just, okay, okay, we have this because this is our kids, our future. Mm -hmm. We need to let, lead them. We have to lead by example. And this is something that has to be done. So we I'm happy to do I'm thinking, like, people voted for certain people to be on the council. So, and I see a lot of cameras, and I think the city is um, taking it. Like, you have to speak to the council people that you voted for to hold them accountable for some of the things that you want. Like, it would be absolutely fantastic for us to meet as a council and a board and have like a meeting. Now, I don't know how we would do that. Legally, well, we, we both have attorneys mm -hmm. where we can say um, we're going to meet with like three people from the board, three people no, from the council. We, we all need to meet with each other. Like, but we I have to find that legal degree. So, Dr. Superintendent. I think everybody needs to meet. Madam President and Councilwoman, which vote would be easier to vote to change the night of the school board meetings or vote? Change the night of the council. Well, I don't think we're going to change our work because we're going to change and change and change. But we need to come together and make something happen. Delay it. Do something, you know, because it's important that our city comes together, the school district, and the city council. Because the city council. Because um, 
Towards us are their uh, their readiness, their level of readiness, their desires, their dreams. We want to be able to reflect that back to you, but we also want to provide a thriving business area that is built for these children. So I would love to be more a part of it as a business uh, partner mm -hmm. and for the board of ed and also for the city. I think that's important that we participate. The downtown area, you know, we need you all, and we will also be a resource to you. Can we just talk about, just for a moment, on social media about a year ago, it's a change ago, I actually saw an article that was written about you. And we spoke about, it spoke about the importance of gymnastics mm -hmm. and how it really motivates students academically um, as well, and I inboxed you, and I said we have to meet, and that's how gymnastics got into the Orange Public School District, based on a post that we saw on social media, right? And because I thought through that we didn't have gymnastics, right? We didn't have tennis, right, Doctor Turner? We did not have tennis. And who brought tennis? Like those are the things we hear. Yeah. Yeah. Community folks. So I think it's going to transcend down to the educational factor of getting mm -hmm. the community getting involved as far as parents. We have a big immigration mm -hmm. community. We have the Hispanic, we have the Creole, the Haitian community. So if they don't see representation of them as leaders, they're not going to come out and support them. Because, like they said, they came here to have a better life, they live in a better life. So whatever they have is okay. Like they living good compared to not all, but compared to some back home, they're living good. So whatever is going on in the community, once it doesn't affect them, they're not going to get involved. So we have to find a way to get them involved more. Get them to I mean, a lot of working parents. So how can we help them with their kids if they're working all the time? Is there something somewhere for the kids to go so they won't be at home by themselves? So they're still learning after school. Come to the board meeting on June 12th. Come to the board meeting on June 12th. Everybody should come to the board meeting on June 12th. No, I believe you too. But you'll see. We have some great things in store. Come to June 12th. I can't say it, but you have to come to the board meeting on June 12th. You'll see exactly how hard it is. I mean, September. I mean, September 1st. September 1st. Thank you. They got ready to get it. Thank you. 
to reach the people. I know the UK president had more than he welcomed them all. Some were afraid of their legal status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's they that. filling out paperwork. But we don't care about that. Yeah. We want y'all to be so they're not educated on They're afraid to complain because they're yeah. afraid mm -hmm. so of their legal status. status. However, come on. It's not a complaint when we're working on the betterment of our children. And that's what yeah, we're all there in their community to say, okay, yeah. go fill this out. Like, they, they're going to trust with their own. Yes. So if they have someone that can lead them and say, it's okay, this doesn't involve your immigration, to go fill out this paperwork, they will more than willing. I think it will be easier for them to step forward and step forward. Right. 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 We have Asian, we have African, we have Spanish, we have black, you know, all nationalities. So, no uh, we all we have all nationalities on our community. So like, if you look like me, if you look like me, I struggle. If you don't look like me, I feel like very against me. So we have all of them on our children. So I think that's why we should. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to say, my name is Dion. I'm, I'm, I'm new to Orange. I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> So I see a couple of issues, but I don't have any kids in public school here, but I love this. I love, 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 love this. Um, there's a couple of things I have noticed. I got in contact with Ms. Wooten, and from there I just have a drive, so I'm willing to participate in anything. Ms. Wooten is going to send me whatever information mm -hmm. and so forth, and then we'll just make it Welcome, Welcome. 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 I'm finding a lot of my customers are expats from New York. How does that impact in the school system? It's growth. It's making it grow. You know, they sharp. Right. They sharp. And they ask great questions, they right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do think that what's most important is that, um, and I said this at the kindergarten orientations, I just want you to come see. When I was a principal at Thomas Chicago's Elementary in Woken, I had this open door policy where the parents could come and they could see what we were doing pedagogically, but also socially emotionally. There's nothing that any teacher in this district hired, any parent, any principal, the superintendent, whatever you need to see is it's available, right? Because we're doing great work. And do we all have a place to grow? We all can grow, yes. right? But we are doing what's in the best interest of children. And I will not allow anybody to talk about the staff that reports to me because they work hard, right? And so I will say we had a large wellness activity for the staff on September 1st. I changed the way that we opened school this year based yeah. on the trial. It was a lot of planning, but it was well worth it when I saw those smiles on September 1st. Now I could talk all day long. <laughs> I love to speak because I love to talk about how great the district is. And I also like to hear the perspective of folks that say, did you think of this? Because those nine members of the board, they'll tell me, you didn't think of this. Or they'll text me and say, you didn't send a blast out about this, you didn't go through that. Right? So it may appear like it's, um, um, it's easy, but they, they don't play. And when I get a text in order to say, I want to go to some schools, rearrange the schedule, I rearrange my schedule. Because they want to see, and, she, and they also want to really want to go. And I think that's important because they need to see it in its rarest form. And so when I go to schools, I don't even put on my calendar. I don't want anybody to know where I'm going in Because I just need to go. It's all awesome. yeah, awesome. 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 there. Yeah. And I, go, I don't go to the front door, I go to the front door. And just a quick, um, I'm speaking to the parents. Not as a board member right now. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. parents and community, people, we've been invited to the table. So we need to come to the table and learn what's going mm -hmm. on so we can co design or assist on what our children are going to be having in the future and stuff. So we have the invitation. You have to come. I mean, to, you know, to the meetings, the board meetings, and stuff like that, and express your opinion. Mm -hmm. Parents have to realize how impactful they voice your dog. Because there's only so much the council can do, so much the superintendent can do, so much that the board can do. But as parents, you'd be surprised what we can do. And I'm not just saying locally, I'm saying the statewide right? And so part of the district goals we have a few councils, right? So we have the Child Council, by a parent council, 
special education parent council, right? And we also have the student council, nutrition council that's new, based on what happened with shark bones, right? About tasting all that good stuff, right? So the kids want to have a seat at the table, we're giving them a seat at the table to talk about um, why I'm up with, what the food is about, should we change the menus? They have a voice, right? Even so much that the kids email us already open the schools and ask us, well, what about the uniforms? Uh, what pants should we wear, so on and so forth? Like, they know that they're going to get a response, and I'm going to let them know what they need to do, right? And so, again, it's all about working together and having a space where folks know they can talk to someone that's not punitive and all that good stuff. They just want to know that they have a space that's safe, right? And we're also going to have the parent council continue this year and the student council, which takes place in the school day for the students in um, the elementary and secondary grounds. I do want to say that we did open an Orange Preparatory Academy and Create Innovation. It's an eighth grade academy. I don't know if anybody's so close, but I walked the building. Yeah, and I went unannounced yesterday of 413 students. It's only two. Not even one. Okay. I'll say that again. Only two. We're not even one. All right. And so that's an example of parents hearing us. They were at the roundtable conversations. The kids, the parents, the staff were part of the decision making with the new colors of the school. I did not go in there and say, these are the new colors of the uniform. I didn't do that in Orange High School. That was the uh, uniform. Right? At each school that had kids that were not in uniform, the administrators, the support staff were on the phone with the parents saying, we're not doing this. The uniform is what it's supposed to be. And so I just want to praise everybody for trusting, one, that we were making an eighth grade academy, because that was, that was a lot of work, strategic planning, to, you know, to get it done. Um, the principal working around the clock, the staff working around the clock, the assistant principals. It is, when you walk in that building, it doesn't look like the old Mars Prep. It is Mars Preparatory Academy of inquiry and innovation. And we can hear, the, and I'm not saying that aesthetically it's going to change everything, but it's a new feel. And so the principal, Ms. Holston, did a survey, a padlet with the kids on the first day, the second day of school, and she sent it to me. They didn't know they were going to send it to me. And the kids were talking about how it feels different, right? And so they said, what we heard about Orange Prep is not what we're seeing, right? And so that made me so, my heart was full, because I knew all the planning, all the conversations at uh, Lincoln Avenue School in January, February, March, it worked. It worked, all right? And so are we going to, um, you know, do some overlap with you know culinary over at the high school. That's why we have the bridge and it's a campus. Right? And so we want to expose our students to different tracks before they go to Orange High School or STEM Innovation Academy of the Oranges. I'm telling you, the work is tremendous and it's happening. Right? And so when I bring the board members on curriculum unannounced to the buildings to walk through, and they have they'll, they'll see what they voted on happening at the school lesson. And I think that's important. If they want to look at the curricula resource like on this agenda, we have several adoptions in math and science. This is now the fifth year, and now we have to change, you know, some of those resources that are more rigorous and aligned to blooms, aligned to webs, depth of knowledge, right? Strategic thinking, which is top tier webs, right? And then you look at creating the top tier blooms. And so you want to make sure that students are engaging with curricular resources that are going to help them engage with students or their like peers when they go to the Harvards and the Yales or the Hamptons, right? I cannot allow status quo. We have to ascend what we actually are doing in the best setting. Dr. Turner. I just, I know I sat here late, but I'm not sure if you um, spoke about it, but I just want like you to speak about some of the partnerships that we have with, with the colleges and the college track. Um, and I also would like to, for you to speak about um, the activities that you did to, because people talk about how stressful it is for um, staff to transition from the summer 
back to the school year. So I want you to talk a little bit about what you did for the administrators for the um, thing you did at Keene, and even um, more importantly, the barbecue that we just did. Mm -hmm. And so can I add on to that? Mm -hmm. I have a question regarding, um, as Dr. Turner was saying, like the children, like where were they when they came out of the building after COVID? And where are they now? Um, and what, as a district, what did we do um, to help them? Well, COVID was tough for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we had to recognize that folks were hurting, right? For myself, I lost my grandfather during COVID, right? Even Dr. was gone most of during COVID, right? And so one thing that I've learned from that is that I never even had a chance to grieve because I had to leave, right? And so talking to folks helped me get through a dark time, right? And so we have to, as a community, that school district trust one another. And what I've learned is that folks have a trusting nature here, and they are about teamwork and building of that nature. And so when someone's having a bad day, I've seen staff go to someone's room, say, go, take five or 10 minutes, I'll come to your class, right? I didn't even come to class when I saw someone break down. And I do that because I want to make sure that folks get the understanding that wellness is important, right? Just the other day, the superintendent was teaching class, right? She was modeling the practice for the students and for the teacher, right? Because when we see that they need some help, we'll give help, right? And so wellness is important. Not only is that a predicator of the work, but also identifying that folks were hurting. And we saw it, and that's why we created the wellness on uh, Wednesdays. We created the faculty wellness once a month, right? Because you can't be your best self teaching pedagogically if you don't take care of your mental. That's true. Right? And so you have to be kind to folks. I always say this, yep. be kind to folks, love folks, and if you have a problem with somebody, just talk to them. Mm -hmm. But we have to be able to receive what somebody says, right? And so that's why I think it's important that we don't forget COVID is our say's lessons learned. Right? And I think the, um, what Dr. Turner said about partnerships, and the partnerships would never happen with Apple, would never happen with Rutgers, or Syracuse, or Kane, or Drew, but the, the film group, right? Because that's part of our digital design um, module over at Orange High School. And at STEM, guess what? Kids were able to create commercials and movies, short movies, right? With leading producers at Drew over a weekend. Now, I inherited the program, and we're going to continue the program, right? But I think it's a really great program because students maybe not, would not be able to have that opportunity everywhere they may go. But here in Orange Township, on school district, they have that opportunity, right? And during last year, during the pandemic, they couldn't go to, to Drew. They had to shoot it at the high school. And when they were able to shoot it at different portions of the high school, guess what? They were able to come. Drew came to the, to the high school and we were able to present their short films. And it made the students feel whole. But the last part of the making sure that everybody's good is listen to kids. Yes. Listen to kids. And when they're trying to tell you something, just don't shoot it. Listen to them. Right? I don't sit in my office for a reason. So when it was interesting, yesterday one of the workers came and I'm coming in the door. It may not be one o'clock. And he said, you just come in here? I said, I was in school, so, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, so, and I don't want to sit in my office because I, I don't know who needs help or who needs something, right? And so I ended my day at the pep rally at Lincoln. That energy was, I, I couldn't even sit there, right? It was infectious, and that's the way it began the end of the first week of school. And the new principal, Mr. Yearwood, gets on the seeing everybody in that auditorium so excited and, and it allowed the school to ignite as well. Right? And so that's what we're doing. We're going to do the academics because that's important. But we're also going to do the music. We're also going to do the dancing. Because guess what? That's going to help. You know what I'm saying? That's going to help as well. No, I just want to say in, this, in the same vein that just done first of all, I think it's going to be I appreciate it.
have to fall away from that. No, I don't see that. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm on the restaurant with you, and I'm also a software engineer. And I sit on there with architects, lawyers, landscape designers, so we were talking from each other. We said, you know what? Why are we giving away some of this account? So we're working on a thing right now where we will conduct a software class to show you how to build. Okay. You know, the architect will show you how to design mm -hmm. a house. The lawyer will show you what goes on in a courtroom and different things. And we just we just want to incorporate this in the school. We're so excited about it. So I'm going to say this another thing. Okay. We now have a partnership. Well, we've always had a partnership with GIT. Okay. But the retreat, not this year, the mini retreat, the retreat retreat last year, I was at NGIT. And the assistant superintendent said, why don't we have an NGIT? And I said, set it up, and I'll, I'll show up. I was on the steps of an old Central High School. And from the vantage point, you can see the architecture and design school. We now have, we're building the curriculum for architecture and design. That's going to come out of the high school. So it is already been board approved. Um, the MOU was approved by the attorney, it's been approved by the, the district um, board members. And so we are developing that particular new project. Three architects are the right now. People will help you. And also, this art guy, everybody who knows me, but I'm a major artist. I didn't know about that. But also, from Orange, New Jersey, mm -hmm. one of the most famous artists in the world right now is Vaughn Spencer. Look him up. Look him up. He's a million dollar artist. He lives, you know, in our uh, in the barn he would really love to come back and and teach and show these kids what he did. I started mentoring Vaughn and he was mad on the I knew he was going to be mad. That's why I started mentoning stuff. I knew that. And he is. But he said he's defying his kids, you know, just like Amazing. And then you've got Dr. Kamani Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Kamani's already involved, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's a little town right now. Yeah, but, but these architects are just dying to do this. I'm not going to open the door. Okay. Because the house that was in the What we spoke about. Right. Mm -hmm. They won't come back. The kids should, like you and I spoke about. The students should rebuild that house. Mm -hmm. It's not for us to build it, it's for our kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it could become a town museum instead of our house being a museum. So I always have like a hard stop for an hour, and we've been here about an hour. This is great. Uh, but Adrian, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I want to say, I've been to Miss Wells' house, and when I tell you, <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal. Like, she can sell tickets to go in and to view that artwork. It is absolutely, and I'm not just saying that because she's here, it's absolutely amazing. Let me say, I have more arms than anybody, and I would love to do an exhibit at the school to show the kids work. People were all famous for the number one place that does bonds in the world. Where was that? Barnes and Jeffrey. I mean, it's amazing what came from here. The Colgate's A&P, everything. I have all of this stuff. I love the show of the summer. Let's do it. But I, I personally want to thank Dr. Bishop for taking my time. Thank you. 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 Thank Saturday of every month, but Stacy knows we can already start doing this two Saturdays because we gave out soup to the uh, community, so we're going to figure out if that's going to be first or second Saturday, but this is going to continue. It's my way of bringing people in and for the community to talk to people when we don't have special guests. It's for people to say whatever they want to say about the town. There's certain ideas I will take back to the council. Uh, like someone said, I am only one person. But I urge you to reach out to the people that you voted for and tug those people's coattails for some of the great things that you heard here. Like, for example, I think that exhibit that Ms. Wells was talking about it means was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 
it'll it'll pop up with so many racial barriers because you know right now like there's a whole Orange Day program and I went but it's only five black people there in a big huge room and all these people were from Orange. So we break off into our different places, but I think things like Ms. Wells said, and things like, you know, other people have things in their closet, like I have about 20 pictures of buildings in orange, mm -hmm. I don't know where they are, I don't know what they are, I'm going to drop them off at Ms. Wells' house, because she probably <laughs> <laughs> um, But I think that can bring the city back as a whole. I love the business community thing. Like we, I think we should just say, "Hey, we doing a business meeting, and if you want to come, you can come, and then that will be our business coalition." We especially, I love to see the women in Orange doing their thing in Orange. I love men too, but I, I love to see <laughs> the women minority business owners. I think um, a mayor said he was going to showcase them. But he hasn't moved, so if someone wants to call me and say, hey, hey Adrian, mm -hmm. I'll help you, we'll put it together and give it to the mayor. Okay. And you know, get, get stuff out yeah. like that. We do uh, want to bring the kids and have a conversation yes. with kids one time. I love it. Yeah. As uh, Dr. Fisher said, we have about 15 to 20 kids at the courthouse right now. They're doing a, a mock trial, so we oh, got yeah. mm -hmm. we got to. Leave here, we're gonna go visit the gymnastics, uh, which is right around the corner, and then we're gonna pop over to the court. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of stuff going on in Orange. Sometimes we don't get it out. We have Mr. Mayfield here, and when his guys are out doing what they're doing, we can get flyers. Maybe they can, maybe they can drop I do wanna share that the students um, at April of last year, the, no, May of last, year, of last school year, they, they were able to embark on the one square mile viewing, and this boss had told me about it. And I called you to come to at work, what? right? And I said to her, I said, I just want to say thank you. Okay. I said, thank me for what? I said, I wanted to remind you that you told me about the okay. things you wanted to do at work. And it is because of that connection that our students obtained a history of orange, right? And I was there, a whole bunch of programs came to. And I've learned more sitting there than I've ever learned from social media about the city. So thank you for getting that. We need to. Yeah. Just real quick, I'm going to be respectful of everybody's time. Because we do have to. Just be going real quick. Mm -hmm. Just sign up. Just sign up. Yeah. 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 Ye
that's how my own two kids even better dad, right? And so I didn't come from both. I only came from two parents that worked really, really hard, right? And so I was telling something this morning that my mom didn't get a chance to all this. She died right here when I was 23 in my hands of cancer. So now I had the opportunity to show my children, right, what leadership looks like, what being a parent looks like, right? And so they come to Orange and they say, Dad, good to great. You have a great t-shirt, right? And I said, but I feel like the kids here, the staff here, they're great. And I think that's a good way to right to end it. I just think that the, the kids and the staff are just great. So I always say, don't talk about the staff, don't get the staff. The staff, they are my everything. I support them 180 and if they're upset, they come to tell me mad about something, right? And I, I'm okay with that. But I'm not gonna let anybody say that what they're not doing because they are hurting their minds for, for every child in this community. Now I'm getting to go see the Zip Dates.